Hello, I'm Jack. Welcome to Practical Programming Channel. In this video series, you will learn everything you need to get started with Web GPU graphic programming. In the last video series, I explained how to create a simple Web GPU triangle with a single color. In this video, I will show you how to create a triangle with different vertex colors. That is, each vertex of our triangle will have different color. Again, we will use the gate tool to clone the source code used in the last video. Here is the download link at the GitHub repository. So here is the link. You can download the source code from here. WebGPU02. This is the link. Now open a command and promote window and run the following command. Git clone the link. Okay, this will generate a WebGPU02 folder on your local machine. This folder will contain all the source code used in the last video. Now we want to change the name of WebGPU02 folder to GPU003. So we rename Web03 and CD into it. CD okay, at this point we are going to start Visual Studio Code with the command code period. This is a Visual Studio Code interface. Okay, we can close this uh, welcome page. Now here, it contains all the source code used in our last video. Today, we are going to create a simple triangle with different vertex colors. First, let's open a new terminal window. And we use the npm install command to restore our npm package. This installation may take a while. Please be patient. Okay, finished. Now all the installed package are stored in the node modular directory in this directory. First, let's make some change to our index.html file. From this folder, dist folder, open index.html file. Now we need to change this two here to three because this is the third video series. And we also need to change h1 title to triangle with Vertex color. Then we need to delay this part of the code because this example does not take any input from the user. So we can delay this part. Here we only keep the carries element with ID carries dash web GPU. Here we also fix the width and height. Now save this file. All right, now before making any modification to the Cedar code, I will provide some explanation of WGSL shading language. In the last video, I told you that WebGPU program consists of two parts. One is the control code written in TypeScript, and the other part is the shade code run on the GPU. I have explained how the control code works but we just use the shade code without explanation. So here I will provide a brief introduction to the Cedar program. Okay, from this small window, you can see WGSL Shader is basically the same as SPRO-V language. SPRO-V stands for Standard Portable Intermediate Representation. It is an open source intermediate language for parallel compute and graphics used in modern GPU hardware. WGSL is designed as a thin layer over 
Spro V language. You can see from here, WGSL can one to one map to Spro V. So why we need WGSL then? For developer, it is easy to use WGSL to write the shared code. It is very hard to write the shared code directly using Spro V language. Here I give uh, one example. You can see here is a fragment portion of the shade code used in last video. Here, we only define a white color here. You can see this one, actually is one line of the code, which is very simple. However, if we translate it into Spur V language, it becomes very complicated. You can see here, this is the translation from this simple WGSL code. It becomes very complicated here. So this is why we need WGSL. As we know, the shader code consists of a vertex shader and a fragment shader. The vertex shader takes vertex data, including word position, color, and texture as input. The output is the position in the clip coordinates, while the other output, such as color and texture, will be passed to the fragment uh, shader. This value will then be interpreted over the fragments to produce a smooth color gradient. Now let's go back to our Visual Studio code. Uh, we need to make a modification to our shader code. From the SRC folder, open the shaders.ts file. In this file, we first need to remove the input argument here because in this example we will fix the what has colors and uh, don't need to take uh, any user input so we need to remove the input argument and also need to remove this argument from here next we need to add the code to it to define our what has color So we copy this part to here. You can see here we use the vex three vector to define the color. This is three color. First color is one zero zero. This means red color for the first uh, vertex. The second vertex we use green color zero one and zero. The last vertex we use blue color zero zero and one. So this is a vertex color definition. And then we need to define a color output. Variable out. Out means the output. The name is V color. This means what has color. It is a vector for type. Inside this main function, we need to process the what has color and convert it into a, a vector for color representation. So we need to add this code. Of the position, we need to also process the color. We color defined from here, and we need to convert it into a vector for color representation. Here we add 1.0 represents transparency. Here is alpha channel. Now, in the fragment shader, we need to take the output color from the vertex shader as a color input. So we need to define an input. Here is a variable in. In means input. We color, we use the same name as in the vertex shader here. So it is a vector for type. Now inside this main method, we need to set a fragment output color equal to the V color. So we need to replace this part as V color. Okay, finished. This is a shader we will use when creating a triangle with different vertex colors. Now we can see, close this code. Next, we need to make a little changes to our main TS file. Here, main TS file. We will use the same code structure as in the last example in creating a single colored triangle. Here, we only need to make a very little modification to it. First, we need to remove the input parameter from here. We don't need the user input. And also here, this is a shader. 
do not need this input parameter. Finally, we need to remove user input portion of the code. Here is for user color change input. So we need to remove that because this example does not take any user input. So we remove this part. That's it. Up to now, we have finished our programming for this example and save this file. Now we can run the following command on the terminal window to bound our TypeScript code in production mode. In P and okay, the bound file is created successfully. We can see the bound file size here is 3.3 KIB. It is very small. Now we can click the go live from status bar area here to open the default clone canary to view our triangle. Click. Here is our triangle with different vertex color. You can see from here, the color change from here to here, R, G, B, the change from red, for example, to green. It changes gradually and smoothly. This is because in web GPU, the color is interpolated over fragments to produce a smooth color gradient. I have created a GitHub repository to host the source code used in this video. I will post the link for the source code below this video. You can click the link to download the source code. I will end this video here. In next video, I will show you how to create a same web GPU triangle. Use the GLSL seeding language. See you next time. Bye.